Good morning, everyone. I know that you are alive because I can hear you. My name is Carolyn Edwards, and if you have never met me before or seen or felt my hugs, I am part of the worship team here at ECHO, and today I am going to continue talking about how we can multiply in the lives of others. And the next point, the next principle, is to model the way. I know we often hear, do what I say and not what I do. Now we want to change that. Because in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, it says, and that's Paul speaking, and you shall imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Now there's an accountability factor here because Paul wanted to set an example so that others can follow. I know we have heard so many misconceptions about ourselves and how we're inadequate, I'm broken, I can't do it, and we can go on and on and on. But as Pastor Felipe said, even me standing in front of you here today, that is me being different and stepping up and setting some kind of example because I can come up with multiple excuses as to why I couldn't do this this morning. And you can step up to the plate and be a model for someone else as well. Another misconception you often hear is that I'm not good enough. I am, this is new for me. So how can I, who don't really know anything about how to model to other people, step up to the plate? Now, people would rather that we be real and authentic as opposed to being right and perfect all the time. Okay? So, that is something that we need to focus on in multiplying our lives into others. I'll give you an example of the person that multiplied their lives into mine from a young age, and that's my mom. Now, my mom is a prayer warrior, someone who really loves the Lord, but she's not as spoken, outspoken, I would say, as I am. She's like a sleeping giant, but when she speaks, she gives you a prophetic word. Um, my mom, so I'm from the Caribbean, and my mom sells local spices and candies to tourists, and she had that green bench. And that green bench is where a ton of people would come and my mom would just pour into their lives. And when she spoke to these people, we felt, my goodness, they're using my mom. She needs to do her work. And that bench was like the financial office, that's the counseling center. And my mom would have like the, the, these green or uh, uh, brown envelopes they were. And she would put something inside there. We know what that was, some cash. And she would bless a sister or bless a brother. And for us growing up, what we thought was, man, is my mom the money tree or what? You know, why are people coming to her? But my mom was so focused on pursuing God and what he wants of us to step up to the plate. And she wasn't worried about how people think or thought of her because she can say, or she could have said, my goodness, I am not eloquent in speech. I'm just a vendor. But she needed to model what living the Christ-like way was all about because she had three girls. And that is what I, was my example of how you model after Christ. Now, the next point as how we can model into other people's life is to give instruction and guidance. I know that's a tough one because in our today's society, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We are, we are so worried about what people may say, if we would lose friendships and things of that sort. But people and human beings need instruction and guidance to flourish. In Mark 4, from 30 
to about 34, Jesus used the parable of the mustard seed. If you've never heard of that before, now a mustard seed is so tiny. And when you plant that seed, it just blossom into to a tree that's big and strong with a lot of branches. And if you listen to that story, Jesus was trying to explain the kingdom of God to his disciples. And when you look at that story, we can think of it as models. When you invest in someone's life and you're close to them, you can instruct them, you can say to them what you cannot say to other people. And if you can sow just a little, little bit in their life, it has the potential to have a great impact. And that impact may not be immediate, but it can and will happen later down the road. Jesus also went on to talk about, or he and his disciples went out at sea and there was a dreadful storm. And the boat was just being tossed left and right. And the disciples were scared. And they woke Jesus up because Jesus was sleeping. Imagine a storm is coming, Jesus taking a nap. And they woke Jesus up because they were scared. And the word of God, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, said that he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, peace be still. And in some translations, it may have silence, be still. And then Jesus asked his disciples, why were you afraid? Where is your faith? Now you can only say that to somebody if you're close to them. You can only say that to someone when you have been walking and multiplying into that person's life. You cannot meet me for the first time and start giving me instruction and giving me guidance as to how I should change my life off the bat. Because you don't know me. Have you had coffee with me? Did you invite me to dinner? Are we going on a hike? You understand? Now, when you have been doing all of those things and living life with me, and you have that close knittedness, now you can talk. And you can cause change to occur when I'm falling off the rails. You can wheel me back a little bit and say, all right, Carolyn, that path you're going down there, you know God is not going to be pleased with. And you need to change your direction because now you're close to that person you may ask me who was that person for you boy do I have a story those were my mentors and it was a beautiful couple a beautiful couple that were very talented musicians and they loved the Lord with all their heart and I remember I had a situation where I was hurt and I was really angry and they say, come over. I always went over to their house and they said, come over, we'll pray and we'll talk about it. And they instructed me afterwards. They said, you know what? I think you need to do some prayer and fasting and then you need to go and meet whoever that person that hurt you, call a meeting and forgive them. What? Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. Why is it that I have to go and forgive that person? But I was reminded of the scripture that said, it just slipped me, but it's going to come back. Oh, leave your gift at the altar and go make it right. <laughs> Imagine, it's not the other way around. But they could have only said that to me because they were close enough. They didn't give me a free pass. To say, well, you know, Carol, we understand, so don't worry about it. If you want to do it, okay. If you don't, they didn't say that. They said, you need to pray, fast, call a meeting, and then forgive. And that's only because they have invested their lives into mine, and they know how to give instruction and guidance. And that's what God expects us to do today model show people an example you just need to be a step or two ahead of the person that you're leading 
Don't worry about, oh, I'm not good enough and I'm broken and I can come up with multiple excuses. But if you do just that today, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy road. It might be messy, but God. Thank you so much for listening today. And Pastor Felipe will continue from here on out. Thank you. Would you join me in thanking the leader that stepped up at your campus to teach today? Can we give